checks and wheat checks. The bite sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are searching through an abandoned spaceship, half buried in a landslide in the mountains of Venus. Whatever forced this spaceship to land, it certainly wasn't lack of fuel. Look at all these drums bolted in their racks. Mm -hmm. They all seem to be full. Commander, the ship's moving. Dirt's giving way. We're sliding down the slope. Run for the next compartment. One of the drums hits us. We'll be crushed. Commander! We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Treasure of Mount Roll Cab. It's tops, it's tops, it's tops. Yes, sir, space patrollers, rice checks is tops three ways. For taste, for size, for get up and go. So get rice checks today. One, tops for taste. Delicious shredded rice. Oven toasted three times to make it three times tastier. Yep, tasty, extra tasty, and super tasty. That's rice checks. Two, tops for size. Because rice checks is made of that modern bite sized design. Light, fluffy, sunny, gold, triple toasted shredded rice biscuits, just the right size for an easy bite. Three tops for get up and go, you betcha. A nourishing breakfast with rice checks and zip, zoom, you're way, way ahead before you even start. That's why Commander Corey made rice checks an official cereal of the Space Patrol. Rice checks, the cereal that's good with cream and sugar, good with fruit on top, good right from your pocket for snacks. Rice checks. Bite-sized shredded rice biscuits, hollow inside so they can fill up with cream for a super luscious bite. Mmm, mmm, rice checks. Full of that get up and go. The kind of energy you need to be an honest-to-goodness space patroller like Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy. So remember, rice checks is tops three ways. Get rice checks today. And get wheat checks today. Wheat checks, the wonderful, power-rich space patrol cereal made of hearty whole wheat. Bite size, too. And what a bite. Wowie, hurry, get checks today. The only cereals that bring you a free Space Patrol trading card inside the package. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now today's Space Patrol adventure, the treasure of Mount Roll Cab. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have landed their spaceship in a clearing at the base of Mount Roll Cab on the planet Venus. Leisurely, they stroll up a rough path overhung with lush Venus vegetation toward a crude cabin built against the side of the mountain. In the trees above them, large squirrels chatter and scold while gaily plumed birds start about like streaks of flame among the branches. Smoke and rockets, Commander. What a wonderful place to spend a five-day leave. I knew you'd like it, Ham. I'm sure glad the rain's let up, though. Looks like we'll get in a few days hunting after all. Mm -hmm. I'm a little puzzled about Matt, though. What do you mean, not answering your space phone call? Yes, I was afraid at first the heavy rains might have damaged his cabin, but it looks all right. Um, hey, a real old-fashioned log cabin. Yeah, Matt built it himself with old-fashioned hand tools. No Atomo power saws for Matt Henshaw. <laughs> well, uh, don't tell me he hunts with a bow and arrow. No, he's not that old-fashioned. No, if we go hunting, Matt will lend us one of his special guns. There's not even an instant of suffering for the animal, no matter where it's hit. Hmm. Looks like Matt isn't home. Hmm. What now? Yeah, we'll go in and wait. He never locks his door. It smells kind of musty. It certainly does. I guess it's been shut up for some time. Maybe Mr. Hinshaw's taking a vacation. There's no place he'd want to go that I know of. He has no relatives. Matt must have been gone several days. Look at the dust all over everything. Well, could he have gone on a long hunting trip? Or farther up the mountain, maybe? In all the rain? Well, maybe he left before the rain and got caught in it. A, a landslide, maybe. If it were anyone else but Matt Henshaw, I'd say that was a good explanation. I'll check the space phone. Maybe Matt contacted Venus City. Commander Corey calling Space Patrol headquarters, Venus City. Commander Corey calling Venus City Space Patrol. Venus City Space Patrol here. Go ahead, Commander. I'm at Matt Henshaw's cabin at the base of Mount Roll Cab. But there's no sign of Henshaw. Have you received a message from him? I have no record of it, Commander. If you can tell me when it was uh, to have been received, I'll check on it. If he did call, it would have been an emergency. We've received no emergency messages from that sector of Venus, Commander, except, of course, about the escape. What escape? Oh, sorry, sir, I thought you knew. 
The escape from criminal rehabilitation camp number two, south of Mount Road Camp. When did this happen? Well, yesterday, sir. It happened when some of the men about to be released were called out on special emergency detail on account of the flood. How many escaped? Well, just one man, Commander. Hoke Sherman. He managed to slip away while the men were building barricades. Well, Sherman's dangerous. Have they located him yet? Not yet, sir, but it's only a matter of time. That whole lowland region is a network of wire-filled ravines and marsh. He can't get far. Unless he had help from outside. Well, right now, I'm more concerned about Matt Henshaw. I'm going to look for him. I'll call you back at 1,400 hours. Yes, Commander. Hurry out. Say, that criminal rehab center isn't far from here, is it, sir? No, just a few miles. I was just thinking, uh, maybe Sherman had something to do with Mr. Henshaw not being here. By the looks of this cabin, Henshaw has been gone for days. Sherman escaped only yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Go on, Hap. We'll work our way up the mountain and see if we can find any trace of Henshaw. Several miles from the cabin, higher up the slope of Road Cab Mountain, two men push their way through the brush. Finally, they stop and gaze at a raw scar of reddish clay where a landslide has spilled down the mountainside into a muddy, turbulent mountain stream. I tell you, Hoke, there isn't any point going out further. I say there is. Sooner or later, it's going to be narrow enough so we can cross. Then we can work our way down, far away from the rehab center. Well, I wonder if they found my spaceship yet. Yeah, probably. I wish you hadn't landed so far from the center. Well, how did I know that flash flood was going to cut us off? What a lousy break. Never mind, Endicott. The important thing is I'm free. We can live indefinitely on this mountain. There's plenty of game. Space Patrol will never think of looking for us here. Uh, well, suppose the rain begins again. It'll slow us down, all right, but it'll also slow down the search. Endicott, what in Saturn's rings is that? What? That thing sticking out of the dirt where the landslide is. It's a big, sharp rock, I guess. Rock nothing. It's the prow of a spaceship. You're right, Hope. It must have crashed in the storm. Not in this last storm. Look at that hull, how rusty it is. Must have crashed years ago, and the landslide uncovered it. Yeah, what do you know about that? In the cot, this is a break. There's shelter in, and probably supplies. We can hold up here for a while if we have to. I don't like the looks of it. It may slide down into the stream any minute. Not unless there's a lot more rain. Come on, let's see what's inside the old hulk. Uh, now, would you look at the design of that hull? They haven't built ships like that in 40 years. Uh, it's an old one, all right. Wonder what happened. Endicott, hold it. Look here, in the mud. Those footprints aren't 40 years old. You're right. Somebody's been here since the rain stopped. Yeah, and he's made several trips back and forth. Hey, somebody's coming out of the ship. I'll bless him when he steps out of the hatch. Put that gun down, you fool. We're uh, hunters, see? Now, come on. It's only one man and he's unarmed. Hold on there. What do you tell us what? Uh, we're hunting. We saw the spaceship and came to investigate. Well, there isn't anything to see. Just an old hulk that's been abandoned for years. What are you hunting? Well, uh, if it's elk, you'll find a herd farther up the mountain on the west slope. Thanks. Uh, that's what we're after, all right. Uh, elk. If you head around this land for it, you'll find the going fairly easy. Uh, thanks. If you start now, you'll reach the elk herd in time to pick off a couple before dark. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for the information. Hey, he acted kind of inches to get rid of us. What's he up to? I don't know. But he's got something inside that ship that he doesn't want anybody to know about. He's been lugging it out trip after trip. We'll get out of sight. See what he's up to and then follow him. How far is he going to lug that thing? Not much farther. The way he's staggering. You're right. He's stopping. Hey, that metal bar must be valuable. He's hiding it behind the rocks. All right, Endicott, you rush him. I'll stay back here and cover you. I don't think he's armed, but if he starts to draw, I can pick him off from here. Okay. Uh, hold it a minute, partner. What you got there? I said, uh, what have you got there? It's, it's none of your business. Well, I'll just take a look. Well... Quite a stack of metal bars you got behind the rock, mister. It's a lot of trouble to go to, lugging them all the way down from that old ship. Hey, Tulanium. Hundreds of pounds of it. Why, it's worth a fortune. Yes, Tulanium. It's mine by right of discovery. Uh, but I'll be willing to give you a couple bars. Well, now, isn't it generous? I got news for you. 
You're giving up the whole works right now. Drop that ray gun. Hey. Hey, sure, sure. I'm sure glad to see you, Commander. But worried about you, man. Hey, where'd that come from? That was just a warning. Now you, Space Patrolman, drop your weapons or I'll blast you apart. Yeah, that's my partner. He up in the brush. And he means what he says. You do as I say, no one will be hurt. Now drop your weapons. As he says, Happy, before we could hit him, he'd mow us down. Yes, sir. All right, Endicott, get your weapons and come on. Why not finish then? There might be more space patrolmen around. Any more shots and meet them right here. Now, come on. Who are those men? I don't know, Commander. Never saw him until a few minutes ago. The one we didn't see, what does he look like? Oh, he's tall, over six feet, black hair. Got a V-shaped scar on his upper lip. Pulls his mouth into a sort of sneer. Sounds like Hoke Sherman, the escaped criminal from the rehabilitation center south of the mountain. Hoke Sherman, see? We did get off lucky. I hope you're right. Oh, Matt, this is Cadet Happy. Howdy, son. Uh, Howdy. Let's get to your cabin and get some weapons. Then we can go after Hoke and his pal. If you say so, but that'll give him a head start. I've got some weapons up ahead in a derelict spaceship. A derelict spaceship? All right, let's go, but take it easy. We won't try to get close to Hoke until we're armed. Commander... I suppose I better come clean about this stack of thalanium back there. I found it in this deserted spaceship. I wanted to be sure no one took it away from me, so I... Moments later, Buzz Happy and Matt Henshaw cautiously approached the rusted hulk of the spaceship, protruding from the moist red clay of the landslide. Seeing no trace of the escaped criminal, Hope Sherman, and his partner, the three men entered the ancient wreck. Buzz runs his experienced eye over the interior fittings. The crude appearing control panel with its tarnished instruments. Matt, this ship is at least 150 years old. Smoking rockets. I had it figured around 100. Of course, it's hard to tell how long it's been here on Mount Rolcam. I found it here about a week ago after that first big rain. It may have been covered up a century or more ago by another landslide. You say you found no trace of the crew? No. They must have got out after they landed. I haven't touched a thing in here except that the lanium. When I saw that stack of shiny bars, I, I got greedy for the first time in my life. Well, I figured I'd get part of it, the right of discovery, but I wanted it all. So I took it out of the ship and hid it. I stayed here at the ship to guard it. We'll talk about the selenium later. Now, where are those weapons? Now, they're back aft in the fuel hole. I'll show you. Now, you stay here at the hatch. Happen I can find the guns. Now, let me know if you see anyone outside. Yes. Oh, uh, you better uh, take this Atomo light. It's dark back there. Oh, thanks. Come on, Happen. Let's have a look. Well, whatever forced this ship to land, it certainly wasn't lack of fuel. Just look at all those drums bolted in their racks. Mm -hmm. They all seem to be full. Commander, the ship's moving. The dirt's giving way. We're sliding down the slope. Hey, the fuel drums, they're breaking loose. We've got to get out of here. If one of those drums hits us, we'll be crushed. Commander! My leg, it's caught. I'm jammed between two drums. I'll get you out, Hat. At least the ship isn't sliding anymore. This thing is heavy. What was that? It was a shot. Somebody shooting through the hull. Must be Hoke Sherman. If he hits one of these fuel drums, the ship will blow up. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufel reporting on America's most heavily armed fighter interceptor, the Northrop Air Force Scorpion F-89D. In a moment, we'll hear from the test pilot on this plane, Bob Love, Korean jet ace, with a record of six MiGs in six weeks. Primary job of the Scorpion is to protect our country from invading aircraft. Speed more than 600 miles per hour. Weight 20 tons. Now, Bob Love recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. You know, a fella has to be in top condition to test fly a fast aircraft such as a Scorpion. And that's why I always make it a rule to sleep well and eat well. So, for breakfast, I pick a cereal like Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. They're chuck full of energy and really taste good. You'll like them. No other cereal, puff or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Bob Love, Phil Houghton, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. 
And here's big news. Inside of checks, you now get a thrilling new Space Patrol trading card. Flip them, trade them, collect a whole set of 40. Free Space Patrol trading cards inside of rice checks and wheat checks. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the treasure of Mount Roll Cab. On Mount Roll Cab on the planet Venus, Buzz and Happy rescued the mountaineer Matt Henshaw from two criminals, Endicott and Hoke Sherman. The outlaws, however, succeeded in disarming the commander and Happy and then fled up the mountain. Henshaw then led Buzz and Happy to erect spaceship to obtain weapons to pursue Sherman and Endicott. While the space patrollers were in the fuel hold, searching for the weapons, the spaceship began sliding down the mountain. A heavy fuel drum broke loose from its moorings, pinning Happy against a bulkhead. Now, as Buzz struggles to free Happy, the rusty old hull of the ship is pierced by gunfire. He's coming awfully close to those fuel drums. I'll have you out of here in a second, Hap. Just roll this thing a few inches. Hey, he hit a drum. I wonder it didn't explode. Uh, You're hitting it, Commander. Yeah, that does it, sir. I'm, I'm free now. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh-oh, we hit another drum. Fuel spraying all over. Oh, one little spark and we'll blow up the whole side of the mountain. Come on, let's get out of here before this fuel blows up. Wait a minute, Happy. I don't think there's any danger. Huh? No danger? What? If that was fuel, we'd smell it. Well, well what is it, then? Water. Brackish, foul-tasting water. Yeah, but the metal drums, they all have rocket fuel painted on them. Yes, that may be a clue to how this ship happened to land on the mountain with a cargo of thalanium. Somebody switched drums. Yeah, but then something went wrong and the thalanium wasn't picked up. We'll tackle that mystery later. Come on. Oh, Matt, where are those weapons? They're... they're... Commander, Mr. Hinshaw's hurt. My shoulder. I got clipped by a hook of metal from the hull. And the hook's bullets. I'll go after that rat. Oh, wait, Happy. Hope and his pal may be waiting out there to pick us off. Got to take care of Matt first. See if you can find a first aid kit. Yes, sir. A hundred yards away from the ancient ship, Hoke lowers his weapon and turns to Endicott. If there is any fuel left in that old hulk that must have deteriorated. <laughs> you probably got all three of them anyway. You sure riddled the hull. Anyhow, they're scared, and now's our chance. Let's go. Up over the mountain? No, down. The way's clear now. But you said there might be more space patrollers around here. If Corey had anyone with him, they'd be up here by now. This is our way out. He must have a spaceship down at the base of the mountain. We'll get to it and blast off. In a space patrol ship? Sure, what could be safer? It'll at least get us off Venus. Yeah. We can get another ship later, out in space. Sure, and on the way down, we can pick up that thalanium. Are you crazy? The two of us would have to make a dozen trips at least. By that time, Corey might come after us. If he's still alive, which I doubt. Anyway, there's no risk. One of us will guard the trail while the other lugs thalanium down to the ship. Why leave a fortune like that up in the mountains? Yeah, it's now or never, I guess. All right, let's go. Back in the control compartment of the derelict spaceship, Commander Corey bandages Matt Henshaw's wounded shoulder. It's not a very professional job, Matt, but it's the best I can do under the circumstances. It's fine, Commander. I figured I got off lucky. You take off after those crooks. I'll be all right here. No, Matt, you've got to have medical attention. Happy and I are going to get you to our spaceship. Just how do you think you're going to get me down the mountain? Can't walk. I'm no hummingbird, believe me. It'll be a rough journey, all right. Rough for all three of us, but especially for you, man. Now, wait. That stream out there... Huh? Flows right down the mountain to within a few hundred feet of our ship. If we can make a raft... Yeah, but is the stream deep enough? It's worth a try. It's going to be some job finding logs. We'll make a pontoon raft. Out of what? We'll empty a couple of those fuel drums and roll them down to the water. And we can lash a few poles. After two hours of strenuous labor, Buzz and Happy assemble their makeshift raft. At last, they carry the injured Matt Henshaw down to the stream and place him gently on the bed of logs and saplings lashed securely to the empty fuel drums. Lifting, tugging, and shoving, they get the raft into the stream and climb aboard. She rides pretty high in the water, sir. It's going to be hard to maneuver in case we run into any rapids. Don't worry about that, Commander. The stream's quieted down considerably since yesterday. Are you comfortable, Matt? Yes, sure. This is real relaxing. All right, Happy, take that pole and let's shove off. Aye, aye, sir. (laughs) Here we go. Come on, Endicott. It's just a little farther. I don't think I can make it. Yes, you can. This is the last trip. We'll load the bars and be on our way. Hey, look. There's Corey's ship down there, ready to take us to freedom. Oh, my leg. My back. 
This bar weighs more than all the others put together. Now, forget how tired you are. Just remember, we'll never have to do another bit of work the rest of our lives. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Oak. Hold it. Stop. What is it? Down at the edge of the water, I saw something. Something moved. There, you see? Space patrolman. I saw their uniform. It was Corey and the cadet. They must have come down the stream. They'll get to the ship before we do. I don't get panicky, Andy. One of them's hurt. We can't see them now on account of these trees, but when they come out of the trees, they'll have to cross the clearing to get to the ship. I can pick them off from here. Stay behind this rock and don't make a sound. Don't miss, Hoke. We're so near to freedom. Don't miss. They haven't got a chance. We're nearly there, Matt. Yes, Mr. Henshaw. As soon as we get through these trees, you'll see the ship. Okay. Sure am a lot of trouble. It's the first time in my life I haven't been able to walk on my own two feet <laughs> since I was a baby, of course. <laughs> Put your weight on me, Matt. I sure fixed your leave for you. Some hunting trip this turned out to be. It wasn't your fault that Hulk Sherman escaped from the rehab center. Uh, maybe not, but if I hadn't been so careless as to get in the way of one of his bullets, you'd have caught up with him by now. The minute we get aboard the ship, I'll notify Venus City Space Patrol. They'll have search ships all over this mountain region. Sure, Hoke and his pal Endicott won't have a chance. Uh, wait a minute. Hold it. What's the matter? Look over there to the right. Isn't that a pretty sight? A bull elk. Wow. Look at that head. And those antlers. He's a big one, all right. First time I ever saw one down this close to my cabin. Well, Cadet, here's your chance. Chance? You were downwind of him. He's far enough away to make a fair sporting shot. Wilson, what, what are you waiting for? Well, uh... You came here to go hunting, didn't you? Yes, sir, but... But what? Well, I guess I've got too recent a memory of what it feels like to be shot at. Commander? Thanks, Matt. Some other time. <laughs> Fine couple of sportsmen you are. Fly several million miles to go hunting and throw away an opportunity like this. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Let's get to the ship, Matt. Oh, sure. Yeah, the elk must have heard us. He's turning his head. Hit the dirt! You okay, Matt? Yeah. yeah. There goes the elk, bounding back into the trees. I guess he isn't hit. Hey, who shot at him? Take a look up there on those rocks. See them through the trees? Uh-oh. Oh, sure, I mean... Right. I'm still happy. Slide your gun over here to me. Yes, sir. Thanks. Commander, you don't expect to pick those fellas off with that weapon at this distance, do you? We can't get much closer without exposing ourselves. Here goes. Oh. I, I think I know what's the matter, sir. I was in the water over my waist and the gun got wet. Uh -huh. Now we're in a fine mess. We can't possibly reach the ship. Happy. Your belt buckle is shiny. It would make a tempting target. Take it off and put it on the end of a stick. Wriggle it around so they can pick up the glint. Draw their fire, you mean? Yes, not too often. Just enough to keep them interested. Move around a little, but keep down. Yes, sir. Matt, you just lie there. I think I see them. Something is gleaming among the trees close to the edge of the clearing. You see it? Yeah, they're watching it. If you only hadn't fired that other shot. How did I know it was an elk? Oh, don't get sore, Hoke. I'm only saying it's too bad they were tipped off. Shut up. I'm going to try again. Did you get him? I can't tell yet. You missed, Hoke? Corey! Uh, 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 hit him! I'll get him, Hoke! Uh, 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 All right, both of you, on your feet. <laughs> okay, come on. Sure, sure. Down to the ship. On the double. Everything's okay back aft, Commander. Except that Endicott and Hoke Sherman don't look so good. Evidently, space flying doesn't agree with them. Well, anyway, not when they're being flown for reprocessing at the rehab center. <laughs> How are you feeling, Matt? Shoulder okay? It's dropping a little, that's all. In a few minutes, you'll be at the best hospital in Venus City. And we'll see that your thelanium is put in a safe place, Mr. Henshaw. My thelanium? There'll be a few formalities, of course, but after 150 years, no one's going to step forward and contest your claim. It's yours by right of discovery. You're a wealthy man, Matt. 
<laughs> well, the three of us are alive. That's the important thing. Yep, we're alive thanks to the commander's nerve and my dumb luck. Well, it wasn't all nerve and luck, Mr. Henshaw. Oh, it was luck. If Oak hadn't mistaken that help for us, we'd have been shot without any warning. Yeah, uh, but suppose we had shot the elk the way we had a chance to. Uh, yes, you're right, Cadet. That, that wasn't luck. It was kindness. Yeah, and the elk was just returning a favor. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. One, two, three kinds of fun at breakfast time. Space Patrollers, that's what you'll have the very first morning you start eating Chex, wheat Chex, or rice Chex, because Chex are tops three ways, three wonderful ways. First, tops for taste, that's Chex, the only cereal that's toasted three times to make it crunchy as a cookie and three times as good. Mmm, mmm. And second, Chex are tops for size, made in that modern bite-sized design for easy, happy eating. And third, Chex are tops for get up and go. Yes, a good breakfast with Chex gives you the kind of get up and go you gotta have to be a real space patroller. That's what Commander Corey says, and that makes it official. Makes Chex the official breakfast cereal of the space patrol. But uh, unofficially, I can tell you Chex are mighty good right out of the box or right out of your pocket anytime you want a treat. Yes, breakfast time or any time, have yourself three kinds of fun with Chex, the cereal that's tops three wonderful ways. Tops for taste, tops for size, and tops for real get up and go. So go get them today. You'll love them. Chex, wheat Chex, or rice Chex, the only bite-sized cereals in the entire universe, the official cereals of the Space Patrol. And hey, here's a neat surprise. Swell Space Patrol trading cards. You get one free inside of every package of wheat checks and rice checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are hiding in the hold of a freighter piloted by a space pirate. Suddenly, waves of heat burst over them. Wow. Wow, where's all that heat coming from? The refrigeration system is broken down. Uh, and every second we're getting closer to the sun. We'd better take over and change course before we suffocate. It's worse danger than that in the next compartment. Smoking rockets. Those chemicals. Right. If you get a few degrees hotter, they'll blow the ship to atoms. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Strange Case of Space Pilot Pettis, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Debry. Other players were Ken Mayer, Baylor Kovach, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities.